So last week we finished the African girl, or if you did a boy, and today we're gonna to start working on a hummingbird. And I wanted to talk a little bit about hummingbirds. They are the world's smallest birds, but they have a great big appeal for most people. When we see these colorful little birds dancing through the sky, it usually cheers us up. They seem so full of life. They're constantly on the go, darting here and there, poking their long, funny bills into every flower they see. We also admire hummingbirds for their skillful and daring flight. Among birds, they are the undisputed champions of the sky, and they aren't afraid of anything. They can outmaneuver, outfly other birds a hundred times their size. With their wings humming and almost invisible, they look like little missiles hurling through the air. But missiles were never this colorful. Hummingbird feathers glitter and shine, and they seem to change colors from one moment to the next. That is why people have named them after rubies, sapphires, emeralds, and other jewels. The names of other hummingbirds, like the purple crowned fairy, and the wood nymph make us think of fairy tales and magic. And some with names like Shining Sunbeam, Sappho Comet, and Andean Hill Star make us look toward the heavens. To view them more closely, many people hang feeders designed especially for hummingbirds. And these fearless little birds aren't at all bashful. They flutter about in our flower gardens, fly over our heads, and sometimes even hover before our eyes. They seem almost as curious about us as we are of them. Most hummingbirds are tiny. The smallest of them is the bee hummingbird in Cuba. And it's about two inches long. So if you go from the top of the ruler to where my thumb is, that's two inches. And half of that is just beak and tail. It weighs less than 1 15th of an ounce, it's two grams, but believe it or not, some hummingbirds get quite large. The giant hummingbird that lives in South America can reach lengths of more than eight inches. So that would be from the top of the ruler right to the eight. So look at how long that is from the top to my thumb. Okay. Um, uh, but whatever their size from the biggest to the smallest, we think you will agree that hummingbirds are fascinating and delightful creatures. The busy life of a hummingbird is buzzing with activity. For its size, a hummingbird uses more energy in a day than any other warm-blooded animal. It spends most, most of its day searching for flowers and eating nectar. But hummingbirds spend a great deal of time and energy doing other things as well. One of their favorite pastimes is bathing. They can often be found splashing in a stream or fountain somewhere, and they find a variety of interesting ways to get their daily baths. Wherever they are, whether they are eating or bathing or just resting, they are probably alone. Hummingbirds are fiercely independent. Then they are together, and when they are together, they spend most of their time fighting and chasing each other. And of course, that may change during the mating season. But even then, a hummingbird's romance is usually short and sweet. So hummingbirds can fly like little helicopters. They can hover, move from side to side, go straight up, straight down, and even backwards. They all do this by rotating each wing in a circle, which is similar to the way a helicopter flies. When a hummingbird pushes air one way, it drives the bird the other way. For example, when a hummingbird rises against, uh, rises straight into the air, its wings are moving in a flat circle. This pushes the air down and forces the bird up. To fly upward, the hummingbird just tilts its wings until they push the air backward. It can even rotate its wing back behind its back. 
Uh, this pushes the air forward, which allows the hummingbird to fly backward. The bird pictured in the left ho hovering, um, and notice how its wing is turned upside down. So here are the flight um, patterns that I was just talking about. So you can see each one with the bird's wings in different directions. Okay. The hummingbird wing is 10 primary feathers, which is extremely long and narrow. With the wings flap, when the wings flap, these feathers vibrate, and that's what makes the humming sound. Starting from the tip, see if you can count the 10 primary wing feathers in the bird's wing. So these are the 10 primary feathers that you'll see in the bird's wings. Um, this happens to be a female, which is not as colorful as the male. The difference you see here is the female has more of a gray head, but the male has a green head and it has um, red at the base of its throat. Okay, so we're going to be drawing something like this. And what I recommend is we can use, um, you can use color pencil, you can use marker. We're going to use watercolor. Next week we're going to be using um, chalk pastel. We haven't used that yet, and we're going to be coloring in the flowers. Uh, the ones that we're going to be doing are different flowers. Now what I might recommend to you, if you haven't gotten it, or maybe you might have it, is instead of just the plain glitter, to get a glitter glue that we can add to our uh, hummingbird. And as you can see, we, we're going to add a little bit of shine to it. So I'm going to use this. It's, um, and it's it's, it's clear, but it's got some beautiful green glitter inside. Okay, so we're going to add that to the wings. And I wanted to show you some different hummingbirds. Um, that's the drawing that we're going to be doing. So you can see each picture that we'll look at has a completely different kind of hummingbird. I believe there are 150 different species. We just talked about um, three or four uh, in the introduction. <coughs> And as you can see in this one, he has more yellow tones and gray. So each one is completely different. Now this one, um, more white, off-white, and like a, a light brown and black, t uh, black and white tips to the tail. <clears throat> this one is multicolored. Look how beautiful this photograph is. Um, it's really almost every single cool color that you can think of with just a hint of warm colors on the underneath part of his body. And he's got his beak sticking in the flower for the nectar. <clears throat> Here's another one. As you can see, mostly um, shades of different green. <clears throat> this one some beautiful, um, cool colors with some black, and I can see green, purple, and blue on this particular hummingbird. And this one has a black head with green underneath its um, neck, and then black and shades of green. And they're all hovering into a flower <clears throat> to get their nectar. Now next week I have a Excuse me. I have a um, hummingbird nest that I will look for at home or in my garage and um, see if I can find it so I can show you guys. Okay, so you're going to need 7 by 10 piece of paper. Um, I recommend that you, you um, do this first in pencil. I'm going to be doing this in marker. Also, if you have a very... Um, fine point marker, that would be great, like a razor tip. And it would also be great if your marker <clears throat> was a Sharpie. Now the razor tip is slightly thinner than the regular Sharpie. As you can see, this is a regular Sharpie and this one is the razor tip. It's a much skinnier tip. <clears throat> so you're gonna need, <coughs> excuse me, you're gonna need um, pencil, eraser, and um, and then a razor tip if you have it, which would be great. And then I recommend um, 
I think next week we'll use watercolor, mar uh, not markers, watercolor paints, a paintbrush, um, water, a rag, and the glitter glue if you have it. Okay, so here's the center of the paper pretty much. So you're gonna go up from the center and over to the right, and we're gonna make a guide dot, all right? So I, please do this first in pencil, and then go over it with the uh, marker. And the beak, they're long and slender, so you're gonna make a curve to the top part of the beak. And you're gonna go back to where we started the guide dot. And you can see how slender the beak is. You're gonna make it slightly wider at um, the end of the beak and do an angle line coming to <clears throat> the line we just finished. And then right through the center, you're gonna do the middle part and take that right to the very end of your beak. So at the top part of the beak, we're gonna start to kind of curve under slightly and curve up and out for the top of the head, all right? Right behind the beak, we're just gonna kind of darken this just a little bit and then make kind of a light line right behind the base of the beak and Behind that, you're gonna do a small circle for the eye. And <clears throat> we're going to do another circle inside, but leave the bottom part white. So you're just doing a double curve from the bottom. And then a small circle inside the eye. So this is what it will look like. Don't color in that small circle, <clears throat> color around it. So you can show the reflection of light when you're done with it. And then we're gonna go under the beak, close to the end, and you're going to kind of curve out. And <clears throat> we're gonna just do like a couple of lines right by the eye, just below it. And then you're gonna make a curve out, All right? Now, the, um, the feathers are kind of like in a little, pattern kind of like a U shape with dashes as that you can see we're just doing a few we're not going to do every single every single feather on <clears throat> the um, head <clears throat> okay now we're gonna just continue with some of the feathering along the back of the head. And then we're gonna stop so that we can continue on doing more of the body. So right at the back part of the head, <clears throat> what you're going to be doing is, you then you're gonna curve out and take that curve going down. <laughs> Excuse me. All right, where I finished this third set of um, smaller feathers, we're just gonna go right, and I'm making kind of like little dashed lines to show that it's um, got feathers. And then right here, I'm gonna extend with a slight curved line stand out. So if you were <clears throat> to judge by where the end of the beak is and where the end of the wing is, it's kind of a diagonal space. So from top here, you kind of do an imaginary diagonal line and you'll see where it ends. So let's go underneath to do <clears throat> the um, under part of the wing. And as you can see, I'm kind of feathering my lines. And then I'm gonna do some of my feathers. As you can see, these are longer than the ones that we're doing on the back of the head. So they're right next to each other. They start to get slightly wider. And then this kind of comes in a little bit. And then they start to change direction. Okay, and then 
just finish off the feathers on the wing. And we're just gonna go just above the feathers and make kind of curved lines. And we're gonna go right up to the top of the wing. And we're gonna leave a little bit of space here because there's just one more feather that we're gonna add. Okay, so if you were to take your finger, go through the wing and go right past it, we're just gonna do the belly of our hummingbird. And then we're gonna take some lines coming down at an angle, as you can see here. Um, it's a little, it starts to get skinnier because then at the very bottom, we've got some feathers going up and some tiny tail feathers. Um, we can see three offhand. A couple are overlapping each other. So we're just gonna add those uh, slight tail feathers. And we're just gonna go right underneath the bottom part of the wing and just do kind of a few more feathering lines. Okay, we take a couple curves right to the back side of our hummingbird. And then you can just add some of these lines. They're kind of like a, a small U when you look at the shape. So you could just do like a small U shape and then just go over it with your marker to create, you know, the feathering. And then the lines kind of switch direction when we do the feathering on the wing, the top part of the wing. So we're just adding some little curved lines to create some texture on our hummingbird. And then let's just take some more feathers going along the back. Okay, and then what we can do is just draw a line down the center of these feathers that are the under part of the wing. For some more detail. Okay, so when you're done with your hummingbird, then you can um, erase any of your pencil lines, kind of clean it up. And there's one other area right by the belly that I'm just gonna do some, like just some dashed lines to create some slight feathering on the under part of my, of my hummingbird. So clean up any pencil lines after you've traced it with your marker. And then we're just gonna add a couple of flowers. And you can still use the same marker that you were using. First, use your pencil, and then you're gonna trace it. So we're gonna do what looks like the shape of a candle flame. And we're gonna take the stem and do another small section that kind of veers out and then we're going to add like a small leaf right to the side of this bloom and then add a little bit more uh, detail to our flower. Now we're going to do a tiny circle with some petals going around. And that just continues going all the way around each other. We're gonna continue this stem coming further down. Okay, and then we're gonna add a flower in this space that we have right here. So we're gonna start with a circle. And you can add some dots to create some texture in your circle. 
And then right to the top side of your circle, we're gonna take a line going out at an angle. And it kind of looks like, when you look at it, like a butterfly's antennae until you start to create your whole petal. So the petal leaves are all touching each other. And we're gonna go right back into the center. So everything comes right back to the center of the flower. And we're just taking our petals going all the way around the center of our flower. <coughs> And as you can see, the edges line up with each other. And then we just have a slate section right here. Okay, and then we're gonna just add the side view of a leaf. Okay, and a little bit of detail inside the flower. And then we're just going to add some lines from the center going all the way around in between those little sections that I've just added. And then we're just going to lengthen some lines. Kind of like veins that you would see in your flower petal. And if you wanted to add another flower that you see um, on this paper, you can add another one to your background. You can add a different flower. I think what we'll do is we'll just start with the flower itself. Um, we're going to color the stem. It's going to be black. Some are very, very dark. Some look like black. Some are black. And um, you may want to do a little bit of research to see what colors you'd like to do your hummingbird. I think today we're just going to start with our, um, our flower. So we're going to use the watercolor palette and brush a rag. I always have a rag on hand that I rewash and a good brush. So I think we'll do these in um, like a nice pink. You can use kind of more of a fuchsia. start around the circle that we've done. And you can do this more two-toned. So you could do a lighter color in the center and then maybe just do the petals and the bloom. <clears throat> Remember there's some smaller leaves that are kind of embracing this blossom here. Now, what I'm going to do is use a slightly darker color. You could use um, a darker version of that color that we've used. And then go around it. And don't cover the lighter center. Kind of have that go right in. Hopefully you can see a difference. And if it's not dark enough, just simply add more paint to your brush and not any water. And then it'll be much darker. If you need to add a tiny bit more water, just a tiny, tiny bit to your brush.
Again, load up your brush when it starts to lose its color. any color combination for the flower that you want. I like the light and dark version. Okay, so next week, so this is part one of our hummingbird. Next week we'll um, be painting in our hummingbird and we'll need watercolor paint. And for the background, we'll use chalk pastel, which we haven't used yet. And the last part of this is our leaf. Make sure your brush is thoroughly cleaned and We'll just add a tiny bit of the green to the small petals that are wrapped around the, the blossom. And this part, the outer part will be darker and the other side will be slightly lighter. Okay, rinse your brush, one more part. Okay. And then just be careful not to have it too wet. All right, so start thinking about what colors you'd like to do your hummingbird. Maybe you do a little research before we see each other next week. And um, then we can go from there. Okay, thank you, and I'll see you soon.